It was a beautiful day on the little highland. Peggy happily chuffed down the line with her empty wagons. She was on her way to Kilkana Mill to collect flour and bring it to the harbour. Upon arriving, the old miller and his son both awaited her. He didn't seem his cheerful self, which concerned her and her driver. As a young man, I built this mill from the ground up, and for decades my flour has reached many different bakeries across the country. This tradition will continue, but under the leadership of my son. He informed. Today I retire. Peggy and her driver were devastated by the unexpected news. They were pleased, however, that he could not take it easy during his senior years. I will miss you so much, Franklin. I'm sure young Harry will do an excellent job, she assumed. Once the sacks were loaded, Peggy bid the miller a final farewell before the party. Work continued as normal at the mill. Peggy knew the young miller from he was a child. He was full of ideas and planned to make the mill more successful than it ever was before. At times, Peggy worried that he was getting a little ahead of himself. Listen, Harry. If it isn't broken, don't fix it. Things are going fine, she would say. One day, her driver oiled her rods as Misty shunted the empty flour wagons. Peggy was almost ready to go. Unexpectedly, Lord Starkey entered the yards and seemed agitated. The young miller has pulled his contract with the railway he informed. Peggy was bemused. This was the last news she expected to hear. But how will the flour get transported to the harbour? She asked in confusion. The young fool has bought a van. He thinks he can take it to the harbour himself, replied Lord Starkey. Peggy was upset. She had hauled the flour train for years. And now it was one less job for her to do. That evening, she was pulling the slate train. It was a very cold night, but luckily, the heat from Peggy's fire warmed her driver. As usual, her rails took her past the water mill on way to the harbour. Passing by, she glanced at the mill and felt very sad. The next morning, she told the engines what had happened. They were shocked and dismayed by the news. When will he find the time to do all of this work? wondered Gunter. Choosing road over rails? The next time you pass the mill, we steam at him. In fact, I might do it myself when I pass, declared James Clifford. Peggy was alarmed by his suggestion. You will do no such thing, she scolded. It's the miller's choice to run his business how he sees fit. We are only machines at the end of the day. If his decision causes any problems, it is he himself who must deal with them. Unfortunately, the miller was having problems. His van was old and slow, and was always late at the docks. Running the mill and making the delivery was no easy task for one man. He couldn't even afford to employ anyone. Every day consisted of unbearable pressure and late nights. Deep down, the young miller knew he had made a mistake. On one particular day, 
his luck had finally run out. The water wheel wasn't working. Something was preventing it from turning. The mill's giant wheel generated the power from the flow of the river. Without it, no flour could be made. He telephoned for help, but unfortunately, an engineer wasn't free until late that evening. A full day's work was lost. That night, Peggy was on her way back home. The slave train had been safely delivered and she was looking forward to a good night's sleep. Approaching the level crossing, the signal was read. Her driver applied the brakes as they stopped. At the side of the crossing was a taxi, and a workman approached her. Terribly sorry for halting your journey, but this is an emergency. The taxi has broken down, and I was on my way to Kilkana Mill to fix its wheel. I noticed the signal box and asked the gentleman inside if I could possibly catch a ride to the mill. Fortunately, he told me you were due any time, he said in a fluster. Peggy's driver was more than helpful. Of course you can. We pass the mill on our route home, he told him. The man loaded the tools in the Peggy's cab before boarding. The miller eagerly waited outside for the engineer's arrival. He was terribly late. The quietness was interrupted by a familiar chuffing sound. Peeking around the corner, he was surprised to see Peggy stop outside the mill. Before he could ask what was going on, the engineer disembarked her cab. He told the miller everything that happened. Feeling quite guilty, he was about to thank Peggy, but she sharply puffed away. The next morning, Peggy was resting in the sheds with Gunter. Neither engine had any work until that evening. Well, that's what Peggy thought. Lord Starkey and her driver both arrived in the yards. Being the oldest engine doesn't give you the excuse to dawdle about. You have work to do, he said in a riddle. Peggy was puzzled. What work do you speak of? she asked. Lord Starkey frowned and then smiled. The new miller was on the telephone this morning and has renewed the delivery contract, he informed. Peggy couldn't believe it, and wondered why the miller had a sudden change of heart. Before she could think of anything else, Misty arrived with her wagons. The miller eagerly awaited her. Peggy, I'm ever so sorry for casting you aside, he grovelled. My arrogance cost me a lot of time and money. I will cherish your words until the end of my days. If something is not broken, then it doesn't need to be fixed. Peggy chuckled. You're still young, Harry, and there is nothing wrong with new ideas. Just think them through before making plans that may spiral into trouble, she warned. The young miller promised. He looked on as the wise old engine departed for the harbour.